but I think Nicki is in a is in a phenomenal place on this album, and as you said very well, uh, some maturity and still some talking shit. Yeah, and there's still some porn rap in there. You know, Nicki gets to the porn raps too. Man, so she gets you to in that, that porn some, rap, bro. My what? God. Rap life review. We are on. Lo is here. Nadeska's out. Eddie's in. You all right, Eddie? I'm drinking some tea, dog. I might cough a little bit, but I'm here. Now, I, I just want to preface the comments section. Nadeska's not here. It has nothing to do with Pink Friday, too. Set up. Because you know that's what they're going to say. That's a setup. That's Why a you set her up for the, you set her up for the wet up? Like, you already that's set her up. Now everybody thinking like, yeah, that's why she no, really No, but you know not. how the bar feel about that side of the couch over there. Nah, it's just me. The desk don't nah. No, nah, 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 bro. Nah, they don't, the gets they don't it. Hey, I got the desk open either, to her, like, all right. Yo, Eddie, the bar don't it. rock with the desk. Man, listen, bro. I look at the comments, man. Anytime anything the desk don't got to say nothing. But that's the problem, Sean. I had nothing to say. So you already so you already set her up. Oh, she not here. She not here. But because, it don't have nothing to do with Pink Friday. You can't, too. Say, you can't start the show off saying that. Yeah, well, and then happens. now it's this. And things happen. Okay. You know what I mean? But we here. Also, uh, we got to talk about the Grammys and, and Quest Love and everybody that uh, saluted 50 Years of Hip Hop. So let's start there. Yeah. Salute to uh, the Grammys. Um, I had, I love the production. Okay. Uh, had mixed feelings about this kind of like set aside. Oh, yeah, yeah. No. Separate I, yeah, I tweeted award that. show. I tweeted that. You know what I mean? I have feelings about that. But, you know. I, I still appreciate. Yeah, like a, once I fan. got past that, yeah. I'm like, okay, like this. Well, was... because there's history there, right? Because the Grammys yeah. never wanted to properly acknowledge hip hop. Never. So, but what's your issue? What's your issue, though? Because they air they air those awards before the actual. So broadcast. during the actual Grammy Awards, they never. We've always felt like whether it was a boycott of Fresh Prince and all of that back in the day, or up till now, where an award goes to something, you're like, yo, that's not even like, how did it's that not even a, happen? Yeah, yeah, like, it's not a category. Or they just completely miss things. Uh -huh. Now it's 50 years of hip hop. Here go the Grammys. Not, we, you know, they did do something during the Grammys, though. No, no, yeah, of course, yeah, I know that. So it's not as if they didn't do anything. So I guess in some ways we need to be just here. That's a no win. That's a no win. Like, yeah, look, but you it. know, come on, man, it's hip hop, man. You know, like, we no, always like, got I, a side I, eye, bro. I, <laughs> You know That's we not saying. always like, trust where we don't just trust everything at face value. They give us something during the actual show, then they're like, look, man, here's this two and a half hour other thing, because we love this genre so right. much. And the first thing we do is like, oh no. Nah, I don't know we don't trust you, bro. You was acting oh, funny yeah, from back I don't, when. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what you're doing over there with that shit. That but no, like now you're trying to rock, cause you know you're trying to rock us to sleep. That's what it is. Uh, that's how. That's really what's try, going on. Uh, is you, gut. you know, yeah, okay. you, Grammy's okay. trying to rock us to sleep to make it all like lovey, lovey. I'm watching the Dallas and Philly game, right at the mm. Hooper spot. Then I'm like on Twitter. I see like 50, 50 years. Like, I'm like, what is this? I didn't even know that shit was happening. I'm watching the game. Dallas is smoking Philly. Then I'm like, oh shit, who the fuck is performing in L.A.? Yeah. And I see Queen Latifah. Yeah. Jermaine Dupri, mm -hmm. MC Light, Ti. Jeezy, Big Daddy Kane. It was a after the moment of like you're saying like, man, that shit should have been at the Grammys. But that was a three hour production. Mm. That was a big, big, big showcase. But I'm glad we got that light. I'm glad all our pioneers and even the kids today, like, you know, Lotta was up there, Glorilla was up there. I'm glad they got those lights. And I'm glad that they bridged that gap. And I was talking to my man Sean uh, at the hookah spot last night. He was like, yo, why is Lotto up there? Why they up there? I'm like, you don't get Lotto without Queen Latifah. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? So that's why Lotto has to be there because when we do this another 50 years later, Lotto's gonna be that person. Who you was hanging out with? Somebody who was wearing an eight ball jacket? He was wearing Pelly 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 he was, he's, he's like, mad at the kids is up yeah, there and all that. You know, yeah. old so I had, I, had to, I had to bridge it to him. I'm like, yeah, that's why Lotto's there because Queen Latifah was there. It has to be that. He wearing a boot cut, true religion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, he, yeah, had, he, had, he had a flannel to like button up to the top, so I um... don't. Oh, ain't nothing wrong with that, ain't nothing wrong. Okay, 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 I see that. Uh, but anyway, big up to Questlove who put that whole uh, yeah. show together. Um, also too, is this our last episode of Rap Life Review for the year? It that's, is. I think that's what Sasha yeah, told us. Um, I know the sure. barbs, I know y'all watching like, fuck all that, you know what I'm saying? Get to, we wanna know how you feel about Pink Friday, low. Gag City, low. Now, before we get into that, though, okay. um, I think Nicki effectively has the biggest rap album yeah. of 2023. From what I saw, yeah. First it, week it, release, yeah, for sure. It, yeah, she's oh, going to wow. be on pace to... to... 500,000 copies is the pace, right? 
I thought it was 190. I saw something that said 500,000. I thought it was 190. If look, I'm man. if I'm wrong or somebody can fact check it or somebody can look 190 is a lot too. Barbs don't play, fam. Straight up. They out here streaming. But here's the thing about the kicker, really, but it ain't even about the barbs. It's about the fact that Nikki is really uh she's got the longest tenured career probably of any female rapper in history. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh mm-hmm. and this album is chock full of hits. That everybody record, Eddie, you love that record. Listen to what I'm telling you, fam. I don't care, I don't care what nobody say. When the second I heard that everybody, I don't know, I, I don't yeah. even know the old school flip. It's just uh, one of the I think songs the that... original is an artist named Junior Senior. And it's oh, called yeah, see, like, I... yeah, that right. It's an old school, like mm-hmm. uh free, not freestyle, but like club, yeah. you know, whatever, you whatever record. Um, but the way they flipped it. I don't got nothing bad to say about it. I don't care if you call me corny. I don't care if you call no, me. No, I love I love that record. The I'll second go on, I heard I'll that go song. on tape. I love that record. Now, what do you love about it? It's fun. Mm-hmm. Uzi, like, that pocket for Uzi is ridiculous. Like, he could do 12 joints like that for an, for an album. I'm just saying. If he did, I get it. Yeah, I'd understand. That, 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 that record is, is hard. And, and Ebro said this before we started. It's easily TikTokable. Like, oh, that's a TikTok oh, hit. That's a, that's a TikTok massive hit. But, but now, in all, in, 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 if you dig into Pink Friday, too, um, hopefully, uh, there, there, I think there is already the video out for Are You Gone Already? There's a, a video out, uh, which is the opening track on the album. So, yeah, y'all love Everybody, which is actually a number one song right now uh, on Apple Music Top Songs chart. The album is number one. But the album Pink Friday is very... Um, I don't know if it's her most personal album. It sounds like it. But it feels like it. But maybe that's because she's a mom now. And then there she's talking about, like, the opening track, Are You Gone Already, which is the one I think that samples Billie Eilish. Um, she's, like, apologizing to her son on it for things that he may find out later on mm-hmm. about her life and how she had to go about getting to this point in her career, which I think, I mean, hopefully she speaks on it at some point, but... I would a lot love to of, hear I, what that's I, about. A lot of people have have echoed that that sentiment that this is her most personal album. Um, I I sense a lot of growth. Mm. Um, I sense a lot of maturity. Like the Nikki that we know online, on social media, is not the Nikki we heard on this album. We heard a different, mature, polished, experimental Nikki. Right, and I've I've been a very very hard critic with Nicki over the years. Um, I do feel like she had she got lazy, you know, she got entitled, mm. um, rightfully so because she was the only one running around for about and ten years. And and as far as rap goes, yeah, she knows, and we know she's the mo- one of the most talented, the one, most talented, easily. Oh, absolutely. If, if that, it's so like her and Rhapsody right. of of the generation. That can like, just go. Honestly, yeah. honestly, we almost do her a disservice if if we try to put her like in a subgenre. Like she's just a rapper, bro. Like we don't even yeah. have to do the female thing. And she's good like, at the she, other shit. Yeah, you know, yeah, I, yeah. you know, I saw a lot of like, oh, there's too much singing, this that, and the third, but I. She always been that. No, she I, yeah, no, yeah. Singing, I mean, yeah. That, and that's fine. Like, that's that. It is what it is. I do think this project, Pink Friday, too, has more singing than usual. Yeah, like where she. Yeah, I think there's a few songs on here where she sang the entire song. Not Which just is that, the, and that was a complaint. That 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 that's what it was. But yeah. she can do that because she's good at it. Right. You know what I mean, yeah. and then you tap into a guy like J Cole on "Let Me Calm Down." Fire. When they're having that conversation, and she's on this shit, and J Cole's giving her you know, advice or whatever the case is. I came in with very, very low expectations. I'll, I'll just keep it blunt. And I was blown away. Pink Friday 2, from top to bottom, is a well-done album. It's well-produced. Well-produced, it's well-done, it's well-sequenced, it's great songs, it's all that. Then you layer on top of that Nicki's rapping ability, mm-hmm. and that's why Nicki is who she is, mm-hmm. right? Like, we all talk shit. Uh, about, you know, the the artist beefing or whoever's yeah. just, ah, yeah. all that's just kind of like noise, internet shenanigans. But when we strip it down. But when we get into the actual musicality that Nicki Minaj has brought in this album and what Nicki Minaj has always brought to hip hop and a her, different care, caliber. her care for being great. Her care for the craft. Her care for being great at her being craft. a rapper. Right. Right? She has never, ever, ever... Uh, took shortcuts. Mm-hmm. 
And, uh, you know, like you said, maybe you thought she was lazy, maybe you sh- thought this or felt this way about it, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. I think rappers go through ebbs and flows yeah. and, and, and periods of, you know, trying to find a new... Um, a new voice, a new A new inspiration, direction, a new yeah. spark, a new whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think Nicki is in, a, is in a phenomenal place on this album. And as you said very well, uh, some maturity and still some talking shit. Yeah. And there's still some porn rap in there. You know, Nikki gets to the porn raps too. Man, so she gets you to that, that porn some, rap, bro. My what? God. Nah, Wayne, I mean, Wayne was talking no, bro. like, yeah, hey, yeah, that, the record the R&B. R&B the yeah, that's it's, it's porn rap. It's, bro, they getting to it, bro. So I'm going to say, I enjoy stuff. What mm-hmm. I'm saying is if you reenacted that record, it would be porn. Uh, all right. Is um, what I'm saying. For, uh, Jesus Christ, for, man. For me, Ebro, and Eddie. <laughs> you want to shut it down as the episode's over? Come it's on, over. man. No, but anyway, it's a phenomenal album and a lot of hits. I'll be, I'll be shocked if, um, and look, Beyonce just Renaissance. Beyonce just ran Renaissance for what a year and a half. Bro, I went to that movie. You cried. You teared up. My girl did. Yeah, I heard. I heard it was tears. And now you mad you didn't see the show? Very mad. Run the piece. Run the piece where uh, you didn't see the show. Here talking about yo fuck Beyonce's tour and fuck all this and f all f bomb this to Beyonce. I never said. Look at Eddie's face. He did because we I was never all, I was said about, that. I said I'm not going. And you know he in the Beehive, so it's completely. Offended. I didn't say fuck Beyonce. I said I'm not going. And if I can't smoke hookah, I'm not going to the movie. Listen, bro. You talk, but I went to the just, movie and it was phenomenal. And you didn't smoke hookah in I the didn't. movie. Yes, and they were just a little bit in the aisles. Of, this is a little bit of Beyonce merch. I'm not even just a little up. bit. Show them that little merch, Ed. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Renaissance merch. You feel me? Nah, but I'm glad. I'm glad your girl uh, forced you to have some culture and go to that Renaissance. They might force me. She asked, "Would you like to see the movie?" I said, "Yes." You wasn't gonna say how no. You, I, how you I not can't. see the concert though? <laughs> Ebro, you see the concert? I went twice and I was gonna go to the movie, but my daughter ended up going with her mom, so I haven't made it yet. My point is on uh, Beyonce's album for a year and a half, the uh, Renaissance, yeah. is the fact that Nicki has so many hits on this album. I hope she also takes her time with this album. You know, tour, let things roll out over time, because there's a lot of hits on this no, album. No, I, I, I do believe that, you know, once the first quarter starts and the award season comes up and, you know, the Super Bowl and the Grammys and this and that, and that I think she'll, she'll well, find she a way to hit the, that She road. won't be in the Grammys because it's too late for that. Right, 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 right. But as far as, like, I don't know if she has tour plans. I don't know, you know, This what, is the album to do. This is the album, like, next summer, Nicki to be yeah. out and about yeah. doing, if that's then what I heard, she wants Then I heard to do. she's releasing a, a new song every day this week to add on. There was some talk about that. I don't know. I don't know if that's for real. She said she was gonna add to it. She was gonna. Um, she was remixing some records. So a lot more for Pink Friday. You know what it seems like to me too. It seems like the most Nicki's been about the music in a while. Like this. And yeah, you it's talk, been you, five you, years you, since the last album. Yeah. Yeah, and it seems like it's all about the music and and how well it's crafted and it's hyper focused on that because Nicki throughout the last five years there's other things that come into conversation we bring her name up mm-hmm. this album is just it feels like to me like it's like oh y'all y'all forgot that I actually am really good at this craft so let me hyper focus on that that's going to be the promotion because if you think about it like even before the album came out there's a lot of people even working within the music industry that were like when's this album drop there's a new Nicki album like Bro, where's I'm, the promotion I'm, I'm for telling it? you. The entire week leading up to this shit, I'm like, there's there's no promo. I don't even know what the single is. I don't see her performing anywhere. I don't see any ads or any brand part. I, there was nothing. But then Gag City started and it went crazy. Yeah, but then even that, I'm like, oh, all right. It was all online stuff. Right, but yeah. there was nothing. But then when I heard it, I'm like, oh, okay, I get what you did. The music spoke for itself. It was really just about the music. Well, and, yeah. and also, too, she's well established. That's not something that she's well established with a rabid fan base. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, a, and an active online fan base. Fan base. Not right. just a rabid fan base who just goes to concerts, but I mean, like, they'll buy tickets, they're they'll online, purchase, yeah, they're yeah. buying merch, they're straight, like, they're as super active. One of the most notorious fan bases in, in if, social if not, media. If not the biggest. History. Yeah. If yeah, not her the fam- yeah, for sure. And so I don't think she needs, like I remember the last time we were talking about this, uh, a rollout being clunky and not being all the way there was, I think it was City, the City, City Girls. Girls yeah. Where they don't have what Nicki has. They're not they there. Need, they need to. They need all of the bells and whistles to make as much yeah. noise where Nicki is, 
is built in and she's a part of. Uh, I can just drop and yeah, I'm gonna that's get Nicki Minaj, bro. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, this was a very, very, very well done sequel. And congrats, Nikki, too. Congrats. A uh, big congratulations on, uh, you know, what are we at now? We're talking 12 years, 12, 13 years. Yeah. Salute. 15, 15, 15, I'm sorry, 15, yeah, 15 plus. That level of consistency over that period of time mm -hmm. for any, any musician, any artist is remarkable. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, doing it in rap even harder. And experimenting, and finding a different voice, and you know, all the styles, up with, all yeah, the visuals, all, up with the like, like so me, much yeah. work went into what she's crafted, and you know, I think now she gets to take her victory lap. This is, this is a a, a point where what she has done, you know, this is like her, this is her Jordan six rings. This is. Yeah. You know, LeBron James with the most scoring, you know what I mean? Yeah. With the most points yeah. in NBA history. This is one of those marks where it'll be hard for another person, let alone woman, in rap to achieve what Nicki Minaj has achieved. Yeah, like the first time I listened to it, I was just like, ah, you know, okay, whatever, whatever. And I sat with it and I listened to it. I'm like, okay, like this is a little bit different than I expected. She experimented. She elevated. She, like you said, talked her shit. She got with the guys that we fuck with now and, you know, it, it just, it went so many different directions. You have so many different pockets. My only issue is, is it's too long. Mm. You give you give me 13 of these, I might call it a classic out the door. Out the door, right? It's a lot. If, yeah, it's a but lot. If, it's a lot to take in. But if you give me 12 to 13. And some songs that are older too, so we already had them. Like yeah, Feed Your yeah, Own yeah, Shit, yeah, like, yeah. But, uh, yeah, like, those, those, those feed the algorithm though. Right. Yeah. Those out, feed yeah, the algorithm. Outside of that, I don't got no complaints. Nicki Minaj, Peak Friday 2, salute, man. Great work. Uh, shout to um, all, if you haven't checked out Nicki Minaj's album, uh, you definitely should, especially where we sit in the time in hip hop where there's, there's um, so many different perspectives mm -hmm. in the game, so mm -hmm. many different styles. Mm -hmm. And she taps into so many different styles and her ability to make different types of records. I think that's a whole other piece of the conversation that uh, I think gets glossed over because in rap, period, it's hard. So and it, and it gets harder from here. It's going. It's only gonna, right. It's only over harder. forty. Yeah. Uh, in this game, it gets harder. You know, Nikki has done an another thing that she's done that I don't think anybody has been effective at doing like she has. Uh, in hip hop, Beyonce's done it, but where you fifteen years in the game and you still, it's not as if your fan base aged out. Mm -hmm. She still has very young fans. Drake was able yeah. to do that too, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Where you still have new fans coming in mm -hmm. uh, as well as the fans you started with. Mm -hmm. That is very, very hard to do. We're in uncharted territory with hip hop though. Like we're, this is the first last few years where we're seeing our artists be able to, to get older and mature and yeah. maintain a fan base and be able to still sell albums and be able to still sell shows. Like this is fairly new. Like as we talk about hip hop being 50, like 10, 15 years ago, like if you heard a rapper being 35, you were pretty much like, eh, whatever. But now like we're, we're seeing artists of what we would be considered senior hip hop rappers, whatever, and they're still being on a sustained career success. Somebody like Nas, who's, you got more Grammys at a Dropped later stage of his career. 40 albums in four years yeah. or whatever it was. Like, this this is albums, new, like we're, <laughs> this, this genre of music is still in the infancy stage. And so for us, it, it's weird for us to, to wrap our heads around um, what's considered older artists being successful, but hopefully this is where it goes and it grows and continues to do that. And this can be, you know, Nikki can be one of those 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 uh, torch bearers of artists that are able to do that. So while we're talking about Pink Friday 2, which is a huge success, probably the biggest rap album of the year as far as streams and sales first week. Mm -hmm. um, maybe, I, you know, I don't know if it's going to do, uh, I mean, Drake, Drake's uh, For All The Dogs, definitely up there, biggest rap album of the year. I'm, I love Angry Drake. I'm here for uh, the Scary Hours, uh, Demon Time, whatever. You saw the conversation last week, right? No, what y'all saying? Nah, this this Angry Drake, these six joints. This is Drake. I, this Drake. This the Drake. Condescending. I want. Drake has the finally petty. got to a point where I'm like, yo, this is my artist right here. He talking, nah, he's speaking nah. on my behalf. <laughs> here, here's, here's what he I thought about. He been through something. This. He got something to say. All that. Happy, happy, you broke my heart. That was too. That was too young and naive for me. Now he get he up there now. Now he old, damaged, angry. You know what I'm saying? 
Drake can't sees win, the dog. bullshit, ready to call these motherfuckers on they shit. This is my type. Yo, Drake, me and you, we back, baby. We back. <laughs> Yo, we getting him on Rap Life in January. Ah, uh, Drake gonna come up for interviews now. <laughs> <laughs> ain't happening. He angry. He like, yo, all, man, yo. all you young rappers is trash. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All Fuck you girls talking bitches. shit from your, back, from your mama's house. Get your life together. I like all that type of talk. That's for me. But anyway, so you got Pink Friday. <laughs> you got Drake's <laughs> album. Yeah. Utopia uh, was big. Uh, Travis Scott. Yeah, it charted again, like, recently. Yep. Uh, Doja Cat has got to be in there for one of the biggest albums of the year. Nas. Nas. Which one? Killer Mike. Oh, yeah, Killer Mike. I'm putting Jeezy in there. Jeezy. Jeezy didn't do the numbers I thought he would do, though. He did independent. Honest, honestly, the, the Nas didn't do the numbers. Nas never do numbers, though. But I'm saying, like, we're talking about big albums. Nas, we're talking about big. I'm really big. talking about you numbers. You're talking about commercial? Yeah, I'm just talking about yeah, the biggest yeah. albums of the oh, year. Oh, yeah. Okay. Biggest album, yeah. not our favorites. Okay, just biggest. Uh, yeah. Okay, so yeah, Doja Cat, Doja, Nicki, Drake. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Travis. Mm -hmm. Travis. Um, did Yeet drop album this year? Yeet. No, Yeet, Yeet. I don't think did. Uh, did Yeet drop album this year? Because he always does crazy. No, his numbers go crazy. I don't listen to Yeet. Yeah. It's not about Broadway, what you like or Broadway, listen to, sir. I'm Broadway. telling you what I don't listen to. But we didn't ask you. This is the problem. Listen, guys. What's the I problem? I said Rod Wave. What? Rod Wave. Rod Wave. Oh, what'd he do? Huge album. This no, no, year. no. I'm saying like with the numbers. Oh, I don't know what his numbers are, but he's still charting. He's been oh, charting okay. all year. Okay. Yeah. Rod uh, Wave. Let me see. Yeet. No, no he Yeet. Yeah. Yeet dropped Afterlife. He sure did drop an album. That's right. Afterlife. Boom. Okay. And that was early. That was February. It's still this year. Yeah, that was February. Is that it? Technically, Bad Bunny's album it's not is a rap, a rap album. It's a rap no, album. No, it's not. No, it's not. How's it not? It's not. Why not? Name me a bar. I don't speak Spanish, but it's all bars. How the bars. fuck did you know then? Because it's all bars. He's not really singing on the album. So what like is that. he? What is he barring up? Name me a bar. Espanol. Like, Espanol bars. Nah, nah, nah. It's influenced by. It's influenced by hip hop. That ain't no hip hop. And it's album. a trap album. It's it's by. He called it that. Nah, bro. That's that's not a respect the bad bunny. Go down here. That's not a hit. It's an influence by right, hip hop. Right. Listen, there's there's country albums right now. So you then can you to. call, but What's, you call a Yeet a hip hop album though. Ye yeah, Yeet's a hip hop album. All Say he does is auto tune and sing album. the whole album. It, that's what rap is. Rap evolved. That's so what rap Bad is. So Bad Bunny did the same thing in Spanish. Nah, bro, it's inspired by man. Them country boys be making uh like hi hats and eight oh eights and stuff. It, it's still country. This is how we're gonna end yeah, off the year. Yeah, but Yeet Yeet ain't doing nothing that Bad Bunny ain't oh, doing. This is how we're gonna end off the nah, fucking bro. year. It looks like Bad it because there's a Ye discrepancy. Yeet and Bad Bunny. Yeah. This is how we're gonna fuck. All right. Bro. You no. Shout out to Bad Bunny though. Y'all hating, bro. No, Y'all haters, man. Big Trying to think who else had a huge year before we rap. Yeah. Ooh, Gunna. Uh, Gunna went crazy. Gunna went crazy. One of, the, one, of the, one of the bigger, one of the bigger songs too this year. Gunna what went crazy. Was, was that's how, now see, that's how we end the episode. That actually. And I thought y'all wasn't listening to snitches. I thought y'all wasn't listening to snitches. I thought y'all wasn't listening to Gunna. Y'all some uh, fucking liars. Listen, Fuck you mean liars. went crazy this year. Liar. What do you mean it's crazy, bro? I'm that might be his biggest record ever. That is his biggest record ever. Did it by itself. All, only, only feature he getting there are Afrobeat artists. That's it. He just uh, he, he had no features on, on that? business. No, he had no huh? features on the album. Crazy. Nah, people ain't, fuck, people ain't Nobody fucking with him. Nobody wasn't fucking like, with him, remember? You know, LA and Brooklyn was sold out state. No, we went to the shows because yeah. we, well, we was like, that's some Atlanta that. shit. Nah, we yeah, in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, we okay. <laughs> we got shit to do with that. My name Paul. That's between y'all. We this gun <laughs> shit going crazy. <laughs> and speaking of Doja Cat and the Scarlet album, you can check our conversation tomorrow on Apple Music. I don't need to prove myself. It's like you don't want to take yourself too serious. I don't as an need MC. to jump out of pop right. and into rap and be the best rapper alive. What I'm gonna do is go in the studio and make shit that I enjoy making, right. and then I'm gonna put it out. And I'm gonna have my little moments where I'm like, yeah, maybe that line could have been stronger, but nothing is ever that serious. Mm -hmm. It's never that serious. Unless you have like a real like thing that you stand for. Like I, I stand for certain shit. Like I don't like people discrediting people's work. So like talking about in Skull and Bones, I feel like that was the most important um, part of the album was Skull and Bones Whatever. because I got a lot of stuff off my chest. 
And yeah. it's just dope. It's Thank just you. Dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That beat is fucking crazy. And I fucked around on that. Like, you know, there were some filler bars for sure. I have a lot of filler on this album. But yeah, I think there was a lot of expectations and I don't know. I, I, I'm happy with the album and I'm, I'm happy for the future. And I'm really excited for the future. Yo, happy new year, everybody. <laughs> For Lo and Eddie and the Deska and the whole Rap Life family, we say happy holidays. What's up? Nadeska here, and if you enjoyed this episode of the Rap Life Review, you can catch me here every week with Loki and Ebro. Subscribe, hit the like button, make sure you never miss an episode, and of course, drop us a comment below, and we'll see you next time on the Rap Life Review.